Yes. Oh, excellent. Thank you for that. Um, I hope everyone had a good week. Um, we'll get into details a little later with like the retrospective and things like that. Um, but let's get started with some demos. Um, which uh, which team wanted to demo first? Or should I volunteer someone? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you, Christina. No, I said I totally forgot about the oh. <laughs> demo part of it, to be quite honest. I should have logged into my other computer. Um, Satoshi, do you have everything on your computer? Do you want to do the demo? Oh, yeah, sure. Sorry, I turned on the wrong computer. I should have done the other one. Yeah. Uh, we, I go ahead or the other team do first? Uh, go for it, Satoshi. Yeah, we'll have you and Christina share first, if you don't mind. Yeah. I'm not sure how to enlarge my screen it's actually pretty big enough for me mm -hmm. it is it's pretty visible okay oh i mean on my end i like to see oh i found out i think okay oh yeah the uh my team worked on other items components this week um maybe Quick the code first before going to demo. Okay. First, we need a list token to add item component. So we pass the value to the component. And then Firebase file, um, it was console log. So we just switch to uh, Firebase function to add new item. Which is add doc. Yeah, that's this file update. And then the add item components. We kind of struggle to implement this um, to, to capture the event of enter key because I didn't know the uh, button type equals submit take care of enter events automatically. So I I implemented with use use effect to make a trigger on window to capture enter key events. So it took time to implement this part. Okay, um let's see uh, demo. So this is a uh, add item components. So let's see the new item. So, I use uh, mouse this this one item. And you can see the feedback new item was added to the list, and then you can check on the list page. Ah here, yeah, new item. Um, This time I use the enter key. Yeah, new item two was added to the list. Yeah, here. Yeah. yeah, that's my our, my team's demonstration. Can I add one thing to it? I don't know if you guys noticed, but if you go ahead and click on because it has the labels, if you click on anywhere on the text, um, oh I'm yeah, sure you'll go back to it. Like, yeah, so if you click on uh -huh, exactly anywhere on the text, it will actually um, select it for you. And with item, if you click on item, I believe it should be go to the input section, which is nice. That's the effect from the label. So it was able to be responsive. And that's it. 
<laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, this might be getting a little too into the weeds, but like 9 a.m. for me, Sunday thought is um, looking at the code uh, where you like replace the console log with the add doc. Um, I really appreciate that you didn't do return await, that you just did return. Um, I'm going to link something in the chat. But that's actually redundant if you're doing it outside of a catch block. And professionally, I've seen a lot of people do return a weight. And it's one of those things where it's like, it's not that big of a deal. It's a little more pedantic, but like it just kind of quietly drives me nuts. So I'm glad you didn't do that. <laughs> Kudos to you too. But yeah. Yeah, it's it might be a little bit TMI and a little too into the weeds, but it's kind of one of those cool like nerdy things to learn. Awesome. Uh, does anyone else have any like feedback or questions uh, before we move on to the next group? I just want to say something like, I think the project is so great to integrate like accessibility in mind. I know for a lot of project that it's kind of the off the thought and here it's like, okay, it's really kind of, it's the same as how we really start a project. So yeah, that's the only thought I have. One thing I wanted to add that I saw you guys did was make sure the form gets cleared out after you add a new item as well. Good job catching that. Um, and I tested it and it did reset that text input to blank and it reset the little radio button back to soon, the first item too. So good job. Thank you. We didn't reset the text because we thought it was important to keep that text there at the bottom until the new item was added. So it's kind of like a little history of what the last thing was added, added there. We don't know if that's how it was originally intended or not, but it made sense to Satoshi and I. <laughs> so <laughs> it was kind of a little call we did there. Awesome. Yeah. Great, great job demoing. Um, yeah, I guess we're ready to move on to the next group, unless anyone else has anything they wanted to add. Awesome. Yeah, let's go with uh, Ismari and or Tila, whoever's uh, sharing your screen. I can share for us this week. Okay, sounds good. Okay, you should you can see the shopping list app now, right? Okay, cool. So we worked on the create a new list functionality this week. Um, and we did, in the end, decide to connect it to the fire store as well. So I'll kind of show that. Um, so right now, I'm starting fresh. And you can see on the right in the console, my local storage is empty at the moment, just to kind of go through the whole flow. So if we start on the home page where we are, if I try to go to the list page, it won't let me. It'll keep redirecting you back to home since we don't have a current list to be viewing. So your only option really now is to create a new list by pressing that button. And then you can see that our token for this new list was just added to my local storage here and it redirected us to the list page. Our list is currently empty, but we're on that page. If I try to go back to home now, it shouldn't let me, yep, um, because we are currently logged in to this specific list, essentially. And then we can also see that, so our, our list token is Yodel Mush Miser. So if I go to our Firestore store console, we should be able to see that that's been added, yep, it's the last one here in our list of collections. So as we are working on how exactly to connect to the Fire Store, we decided to follow essentially the file structure that is currently in place in our Fire Store, meaning that this base collection list, the first one on the left, is where all of the shopping lists live. And then within that will be nested all of the specific list items as documents. Um, so we went through kind of a couple different ways of doing this and decided that this was the easiest because then we wouldn't need to 
refactor or change any of the other existing Firebase functions. Um, it kind of just works exactly how it was, the base code was written for us in the beginning. Um, so if I go back to here, um, right now we know we don't really have like a logout uh, functionality to remove this list, but you can just manually do it out in the console again. If I clear out that local storage and refresh again, it takes us back to home and we can start the process over. Um, so if we just peek at the code for a second, um, we had a few interesting things going on here. So within our app component, we wrote this create token function here starting on 33. And that uses this generate token method that came from the NPM package that we had to install this week. That was the shopping list utils package. Um, so and that's how when you click that create a new list button, it generates that three word randomized token for you. Um, we do have a, a catch block here to, in case any kind of error occurs there, although it'd be very unlikely, that would be handled. Um, and then the create token function gets passed to our home component down here in our home root as a prop. So that's where it actually comes into play on that button on the home screen. Um, and we added on both of the home route there and the next one down the list route, we added the ternary statement to check for that redirection based on if the user has a current list token saved in their local storage or not. So that's how we get the redirects between the home page and the list page, depending on the specific case. And then we go over to the home component. Um, we used the use navigate hook, which is built into React Router um, to help with those page redirections. And we included a, um, a message state here, which would similar to how Satoshi and Christina had that little message pop up that said your item was added to the list or there was an error adding it to the list, this message would, if there was an error creating the user's shopping list, it would pop up this little message that says, your shopping list was not created, please try again, just as kind of an, an inform, informational to the user. Um, yeah, Ismari, do you wanna add anything that I haven't touched on yet in my code? Yeah, um, I guess I can just like hop into like our handle click right here. Um, so if we do do our async call to our handle click, um, which is actually going ahead and creating our button, um, that will actually take us to a function that we wrote in our Firebase file, um, which actually connects to our database. Um, so then let's see. Um, so we have our response um, equaling us adding our token um, to our Firebase storage. Um, but if there's any error in actually creating that shopping list, then um, it would just console log the error saying that there is an error creating that shopping list. Um, and then going back to our home component again, um, if for whatever reason we weren't able to successfully save that token to Firebase, then we're actually setting um, our list ID to null, which originally that should actually hold our three word token because um, if we actually also look to our hooks.js file, we noticed that in the, let's see, where is it? Okay, under use effect, if the value for a token is null, then it actually will delete that three word token from our local storage. Um, Cause we didn't want it to, let's say, uh, generate the token and save it if it was unsuccessful in saving to the Firestore. So taking a look at that hook, we, that's the reason why on back on the home component, we said that if it wasn't successful, that we would set that token to null and that would update it in our set list token function in our state. And then at that point, if it did fail, then it would print the message of um, your shopping list was not created. Um, so I guess just kind of touching on, you know, if it did fail, that's uh, what would happen for that particular function. Awesome. Thanks.
I know that's probably going way too much into detail, but figured I'd, you know, talk about it. That's awesome that you guys accounted for, you know, that use case actually. I appreciate that. Cool, I think that's it for what we added this week. Cool. Uh, I'll open up the floor if uh, anyone on the other team or um, UFA, if you have any questions or comments. I heard, good, huh? yeah, <laughs> I, have, I have a quick question. I heard both sides. Like, how do you handle arrows in React? Some people prefer to display it in UI. Um, I'm not sure what's the best practice here, but I, I saw both sides, like console log as well as, you know, like conditional rendering kind of thing. Yeah, we do have, I think we did still have one error, console error in here, kind of for our development purposes. Um, but that was also kind of the same thing that would trigger that would trigger that user message. My personal point of view is that I think anytime something goes wrong, you should inform your user about it. Because if we didn't have that UI message display, right, it would only show in the console. Most normal web users that aren't developers like us have no idea what the console is. So they would never see that message even show up. Um, so that's why we decided to add the UI element as well. But curious whatever other people's experiences with that have been too. Yeah, I was oh. just going to say, I really like uh, how, you, how your error messages are very human readable um, because in the past, with my experience, I've seen uh, techies get a little too far into the weeds and being like, oh yeah, maybe we can use AI to help this person navigate what this error message means. And it's like, or you could just write error messages that make sense. And I, I really appreciate uh Really appreciate this approach. So go ahead, Satoshi. I think you were going to say something. Oh, yeah. In, uh, in my team, we have uh, showing the message section. So we just show the error message, a kind of error messages. We failed to add item. It's a, that's, that's a kind of error message. Oh, and also I have some comment on the Tiara and the Ismaili team. Um, I like the way to handle the root, uh, like a Tinali expression and use uh, navigate, which I, I never done before. So I think it's very simple. It's uh, less code, so I would like to use this next time on my project. Yeah, that's a good call out. I know people have different feelings about ternary expressions. I feel like that's kind of like a coder. Uh, people have different opinions. Um, I personally like them. <laughs> so we used a couple of them here. I think Ismari did too. But yeah, I like that it's kind of clean and pretty readable in my perspective. Kind of a question uh, for Danielle regarding now that we're talking about different you know ternaries and switches and things like that. You had suggested using a switch instead of the if statements that we had used originally for our time calculator. Um, and I'm, I was really trying to kind of like dig into the benefit of that. Is could you possibly comment on that a little bit? Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. Um... I think sometimes communication can get lost in writing. Like I wasn't a hundred percent like suggesting like oh, make okay. this a switch statement. It was just more like, oh, FYI, this could also be a switch statement. So that was why I like approved it because I was like, either is fine. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't really think there's like pros or cons. I think uh, people just have preferences. So. Gotcha. So it was just a matter of preference. Well, because I had also debated when I was doing such a statement, I was like, well, maybe I should be using a ternary, ternary here if she wants it simplified. Because in my head, it wasn't like 
you know, making sense that it was much simpler <laughs> than the if statement. So I thought I was curious. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, totally. Great question. Yeah, there are many, many ways to do one thing. <laughs> what keeps us employed. <laughs> yes. And it's it's just so great to see how we think differently. Like, you know, different teams are doing different things. Yeah, that's awesome. I just have a little things. I can maybe if you do, I saw like strictly equal to null and strictly equal to un undefined. Um, if you do loosely equal to null, that can be, that means the same thing. That's I learned, I actually learned that recently. Make it a little bit dry. If that makes sense. Could you repeat that again? Yeah, so I, I see there's a line strictly equal to null and strictly equal to undefined. Um, if you do loosely equal to null, that can replace the whole thing. Oh, uh, I think this hook actually came like in like the util file. Oh, okay. Well, but I didn't know that because I'm totally new to JavaScript. I'm more of like a Python background. So I'm still having to remind myself to use the appropriate equals. <laughs> yeah. I think the best practice is always stick with strictly equal. Anyways. But Yufa, you're saying here on row 14, like we could change that to be loosely equals and it's the same thing? Is it's that what you're saying? It's the same thing. Can be, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's what I learned recently, actually. Did they ever explain, like, why that is? I don't... I, I don't remember why, but I think it's, it's like a JavaScript thing. Um... I just, I just don't remember the, the reason. Yeah, I just kind of, oh, okay, this is interesting. But just in the case of null and undefined, like you could use either or. Undefined is this variable is declared, but it hasn't been assigned yet. And null is, is different. It means like it doesn't really exist. Oh, I mean like using like the loose equals versus like the strictly equals, like in those two particular like cases. Yeah, so so if you do loosely equal null, meaning like, did I say this right? Loosely equal to null. Yeah, meaning it can be replaced with strictly equal to null and strictly equal to undefined. I remember, if I remember that correctly. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, it's just little things of JavaScript. <laughs> Cool. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Yeah, great demos. Cool. So we're going to do our first ritual. And um, let me share my screen really quick. So. Oh, oh, my moment. Yep. Can you see my screen? Cool. Um, so basically, it's like a chance for us to pause and share our appreciation for our team members, um, kind of reflect what, did, what we did great and what we did where, where we can improve on things. And, you know, some sh actions you learned you can start doing moving forward. Um, I think it's a great way to really just kind of, it's, it's a great way for me to learn things um, and also just share our appreciation for the team members. So for the next maybe seven minutes or so, we can, I share the link in the Slack channel, I believe. Let me know if you can't access this page. We'll get a thumb up for Tila. We're all good? Okay, cool. So yeah, so feel free to add items. I know for appreciation and what went well, sometimes can have some overlaps, that's okay. Um, and 
once you add item, this is anonymous. So please make sure you add your name at the bottom. I guess it will help to know who wrote this. Um, and yeah, so for the next seven minutes, have fun. Any questions? Maybe a question here. Danielle. Uh, yes, it's in the Slack channel right here. But I can send it here. Copy link. <laughs> Danielle, I'll save this link for later. Which one? Oh, the one that I put in, in chat. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that Brian LaRue guy is pretty interesting. I was <laughs> fortunate to meet him a few times. He's he's the character. <laughs> yes. Cool. So I'll give you some time. And uh, if you feel like you want to turn the camera off, that's, that's fine too. So I'll let you know once seven minutes is up. Have fun.
me share my screen again. Awesome. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, cool. Let's start with the appreciation. Yeah, the first one I wrote, the first one. Um, thank you for Alejandra and Daniel's very supportive, as always, and to everyone. And we have really a strong team, and everyone seems to getting along really well. Let me know if that's not the case. <laughs> and now that like everybody knows everybody, so it's really a time to get coding. I think that would be the fun part. Cool. Danielle, you want to read yours? Okay, you're you want me to read it? Sorry, I'm on okay. like one computer, like going between desktops, and I like couldn't find the Zoom screen. <laughs> no worries. Uh, so annoying. Computers mistake. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, I just wrote. Yeah, thanks everyone for just like tagging people directly mm -hmm. in Slack when you wanted a review or like a follow up for a review. And I put a typo in there, but uh, yeah, it's really easy to miss uh, GitHub notifications. So I would say keep doing that. Uh, that was really helpful. So. Yeah. Cool. Christina? Yeah, I really um, appreciated Alejandro um, took the time during open office hours to kind of let us know. We looked over we were Satoshi and I were having a hard time with handling the enter key. We were... <laughs> hmm using the you know key down press even though the <laughs> the um instructions you know kind of said if you're going that route we noticed just that if you're going that route it's a bit too just you know you're over complicating it but we were having a hard time with it and um, Alejandro actually let us know that what we were currently doing to handle the submit for enter was actually submitting enter regardless of anything being um in the input field so anytime we hit the enter key on our keyboard and so that was really helpful and eye-opening for us. So I appreciate that. Cool. Ms. Mary? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to just thank Tila for being patient with me this past week, um, especially when I was sharing my screen. Um, it would sometimes go really slow. So thank you for just being really patient. Um, and I just felt like we had like pretty good flow back and forth and contributing to our code to add the add shopping list feature. Um, and especially coming from usually coding in Python, um, it was just was really helpful to have her kind of just point out like little things that I was like missing um, or just things that I just am not totally comfortable with, like using React because I've only used it a couple of times. So thank you for that. And yeah, just thank you for being a good partner. <laughs> awesome. That's me. I accidentally. Christina? Initials. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so again, I also really appreciated Satoshi and so this week. I was having um, an issue with my GitHub. Whenever I would push it, it would say it was going doing it successfully, and I wasn't reflecting on GitHub. Um, so they were able to help me figure that out, and I really appreciate them taking the time to do that. Great, great, Hila. Yeah, so for our issue this week, um, Ismari took the lead on figuring out how to do the add docs function with for Firestore, um, and she crushed it, and she was able to explain it to me after we kind of took a break and did some independent research. So good job, Ismari. Awesome, awesome. Satoshi. Oh, uh, yeah. Um... I wrote in general, but this week we tried to use uh, live share with Christina. Mm. Um, it didn't <laughs> go well because it was glitchy and slow. It didn't reflect what I wrote on high end. Mm -hmm. And we decided to <laughs> stop using it and then just utilize a Slack message to get the updated code each other. And it, it worked, worked well, and and I'm also not familiar with sharing my screen, and I was confused. Uh, many browsers on my <laughs> laptop, that's why I was kind of slow. <laughs> and thanks to <laughs> for Christina's patience. 
yeah, live share can be a little bit buggy sometimes. Yeah, it's a free tool, so yeah, it's a it's a great way to be creative and yeah. Is there any other way to like similar tools as live share? I don't really know. I'll do some research. Yeah. I've used a program called Tuple before. Has anyone here heard of that? To can you share Tuple. that link? Yeah. Oh, Tuple. Yep. You I'll find the link too. It's like an app that you download onto your computer. And then it's a, a, just another like screen sharing tool. But say Christina and I were sharing screens over Tuple, I could actually type into the screen that Christina was sharing. So it's another way that you can oh. both work on the same browser, essentially. Cool, cool. It's also like a little glitchy and laggy sometimes, but I think it might be a little better than live share, but it's slightly different. Yeah. Cool. If live share is really giving you a hard time again, I'll give this a try. Awesome, awesome. Then now. Yeah, on our uh, on our Google Doc for mentors, um, it was like zero index. So like week one was marked as week zero. So like Alejandro and I a few times like were like, oh, I'm doing this this week, and like it was just confusion from the zero index. So yeah, behind the scenes, uh, thanks you for uh, doing this simple thing and fixing that, so we didn't continue to make the same mistake. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Yeah. It's uh it's interesting. Like I, I'm kinda I can I think I know who designed that, so but I yeah. That's cool. And trying to make things easier for everybody. Um that's nice. Who oh, wrote the last one? Okay. I it was right when you were sharing screens and I just hit enter I forgot to have my name. No um, but I really appreciated how detailed um the other group was is Mari. Um he led did an awesome job in providing really detailed suggestions and feedback so it wasn't just mm -hmm. like this is working well I, I took some pointers from like how I would like to do um my comments in the future from the way that you guys wrote your comments to us so I really appreciate the time that you took and assessing it and then trying to find you know things that we could do to refactor our code and that was really helpful mm -hmm. yeah so for the last two weeks you have a chance to obviously do the styling part of things and also you will get a chance to go back and refactor things so that would be yeah something you can you know keep your notes and then you can always go back to the things you want to you know do more cool so what went real well and yeah i'm just really so impressed with how quickly our group find our you know rhythm for example like tagging people um as well as how supportive everyone is when we have a question and everybody just jump in and that's awesome. And yeah, nice work. It sounds like we had a our first merge conflict this week, right? <laughs> and that's nice job, yeah, resolving it. It's always it's always interesting to resolve a merge conflict. And for the first office hour, um, is Mary and Satoshi asked some great questions. So thank you for that. And Danielle. Yeah, and I just said uh, thanks for uh, Christine and Satoshi just for uh, ad hoc asking for help. Um, I might not always be available, but yeah, <laughs> sometimes I have Slack open on my computer just because like I'm working, but I happen to be available at the time and I would much prefer uh, you all ask for help rather than uh, sit around and struggle alone. So mm -hmm. thank you too for that. Yeah. You can kind of get a feeling of the, the pace now. I feel like um, if you're going over too long, I know we have like five hours kind of, um, requirement but i i would uh yeah really highly suggest if you have any questions reach out and if danielle's not available i might be if alejandro might be so um we'll be here for your peer members cool is mary 
yeah, I just wanted to shout out that, uh, you know, I'm just glad Teal and I were able to actually implement our create shopping list feature and successfully save our token to Firestore, which I think we did a good job at. Yes. Nice, nice. Christina. Mm -hmm. We're just really happy that we were able to, and that we've been able to make it accessible up until this point. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of a new process for me. I mean, I had done it with images and things like that, but it was really cool to be able to do it on the inputs. And I appreciated that. And I think you all know. Mm -hmm. Tila? Yeah, I have these last couple. Um, so one, just for everybody, I was going to say good time management and problem solving, especially this past week. Definitely felt like the week two issues were like a couple steps up in terms of, uh, you know, advancement or how difficult they were versus our week one. And everyone still was able to get their stuff completed in a timely manner. So great job all around. Um, and then one more thing for Asmari and I, we got stuck for a while on one of those things we were trying to figure out and we decided to take a break. And then a little while later with refreshed eyes, we just like the solution came to us. So that was just kind of a nice reminder that mm -hmm. stepping away rather than trying to power through a problem is often the best way forward. Yeah. It's always hard to find a balance, like when to take a break, when to ask questions, know yourself. I think know, knowing yourself better is always helpful. Yep. Cool. What could be improved? Um, I thought it might be helpful to let the mentors know when, who will be showing up. Um, or if you have any questions, like you can ask the, the mentors ahead of time, but sometimes maybe it's really impromptu. That's okay too. And Christina. So we kind of touched on this one a little bit before, but again, we had trouble mm -hmm. with VS Code, or not VS Code, with live share in VS Code. And um, so I'd like to find an application in the future, which you guys already answered. So thank you, Tila. <laughs> I'll try that one out. Yeah. And Danielle? Yeah, and this was just maybe more of a question. Um, I don't know if this is something that needs improvement or not, um, but I was just wondering everyone's thoughts on, it seems like we've been doing office hours, like, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm just curious if that's working well for everyone or if maybe we should like try to rotate like when it is, because if you have like a strict schedule of like every Wednesday, I'm busy. Mm-hmm. I think the thought was we were wanting to do like Tuesday or Wednesday, like just in case, like, you know, when you're pairing that you're stuck yeah. on something. I think that was the thought, but just make one wanted, wanted to make sure it was working well for mostly everyone. Okay. Sounds like it's, <clears throat> excuse me, midweek is okay for now. Okay. Cool. Yeah, if not, feel free to ping me privately or something if, if you're not comfortable sharing with everyone. Yeah. Cool. It's Mary, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Just adding documents and collections to Firestore, which I had to read the documentation and watch like a YouTube video about that because I had never worked with it before. Um, So that is something that I learned this week. Nice. Christina? Um, so I learned that you could use the type submit to handle the enter key this week, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Satoshi? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's about GitHub. Uh, this time I pull the newly created branch and test it on my computer. Nice. And also, I I think Danielle mentioned about it. Uh, she try tried some uh, adding item on preview page, and it gave an error. And I found out it it's the latest commit wasn't reflected on preview page uh, mm. because of the magic conflict. So. I kind of understand how preview page works and yeah, it, it went well. Great, great. Tila? 
Yeah. So one of the things that kind of tripped us up this week that we ended up figuring out was my takeaway here. So when you call an async function from inside another function, you have to remember to await that function call. And that was one of kind of the missing pieces that we were getting stuck on. Mm. How did you debug? I'm curious. Um, that's a good question. I think I kind of worked through that. Um, and I tried to just break it down into really tiny pieces and mm -hmm. like, you know, throw like a console log in kind of every different spot that the code could be getting stuck to figure out which one it wasn't hitting <laughs> and then kind of mm -hmm. reverse figured out that it, we were missing that additional await from there. Nice job, nice job. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Thing now, thank you for doing this. Um, how do you feel? This is the first time you're doing this, or how do you feel about this? <laughs> it was my first time. Okay. I thought I went great. Yeah, yeah. It's it definitely helps your team members know like you really appreciate them, and also kind of helps me to keep my notes on on the things I've learned. And that's one suggestion I have is for all of you really like have a notebook, write down all the challenges you had, and that will be like a great story to share during interviews or any really any occasion. Cool. So now we're ready to kind of for next week's issues. So for this week, is Murray and Christina is on the same team and Satoshi and Tila. Awesome. So let's see issue five. Mm, kind of continue what we've been doing. So as a user, I want to join an existing shopping list so I can share a shopping list with another person. So we want to allow users to join existing shopping list by using um, local storage is so the, the, the token we save there and the user is taken to the list view and shown the existing list nice so acceptance criteria is there are two parts so if a user doesn't already have a token the home view shows a form that allows the user to enter a token to join existing list in addition to the button that allows them to create a new list. And the input that accepts the list token has a semantic label an element associated with it. The user can submit its form with both the mouse and the enter key. If the list exists, the token is safe in lo local storage and the user is redirected to a list view and shown the item on the list. And if the list doesn't exist, the user is shown an error message that explains the problem. Okay, so the second scenario is if a user does already have a token, and then we will be automatically redirected to the list view. There's so, there are a couple helpful notes here that will help you to do that. I think it's pretty self-explanatory for this one. And let's go to number six. As a user, I want to filter my shopping list to make it easier to locate an item in the list. Allowing users to search through their list will help them cut down on clutter and focus on items they're looking for. Acceptance criteria, a form is added to the top of the list view above the shopping list. And the form includes the following elements, a text field with semantic label, which narrows down the list as the user types. And then when there is a text in the field, some kind of button to clear the field. When the field is cleared, the list is reset to its unfiltered state. Nice, nice. And there are a few helpful notes here as well. Let's take a look at the wireframe. This will help. Doesn't have to be look like that. It's just kind of a sense of what the, you know, 
the components of the page look like. So label with four attributes and area label to donate, to denote how soon the user will need to buy an item and activating delete button. Nice, nice, nice. Cool. Okay, let's go back to number five. Any takers? <laughs> Is Mary raise your hand? Awesome, awesome. Is Mary you'll be with, let's see, Christina. Christina, are you okay? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That works too. Is Mary and Christina. Cool. Number six, Tila and Satoshi. Oh. Tila, press spell your name incorrectly. T-I-A-L-A. There you yep. go. Satoshi. Cool. Awesome. I'm gonna stop sharing. Any questions? So far, so good. I have one question on issue number six, the filter. Mm -hmm. Is that, just want to make sure I'm understanding this right. So we're filtering by item name, mm -hmm. not necessarily the like soon, not so soon or later, whatever those options were. Is that correct? That's my understanding. Yeah. Filter by the items inside the shopping list. Okay, cool. We'll do that soon. Like the not soon, not soon. That will be pretty soon. <laughs> That's separate. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I guess I could read ahead to all the other issues and then I would have known that, but I haven't done that yet. <laughs> yeah, I personally, I, I don't encourage to do that. I, I get overwhelmed pretty easily. <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh, that's where we, we, are, we need to go. But uh, step by step is helpful, but feel free to do so if that's your thing. Cool, awesome. We're good, ready for the week. Great. So for this week, I believe Danielle will be hosting office hour this week. And Alejandro will, will do the code review. Danielle, do you have like a rough idea when you want to host it? Yeah, I'll, I'll drop a note in our Slack channel just so you have it in writing. But I was thinking mm -hmm. uh, Wednesday at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Pacific is good for me. So. I also, yeah, as usual, I'll, I'll I'll try to collect all the resources we had today and then, you know, kind of logistics for next week. I think that would be helpful. Okay, awesome. Thank you all. I'm going to stop recording.